Alrighty, welcome back everyone. It is Laughing Games here. Today we're back with another StarCraft 2 1 vs. 1 replay cast. Today we have ourselves a Protoss vs. Zerg on the map King Sejong Station. And the two players we have here are very good players, so it should definitely be a good matchup here. Spawning up on the bottom left hand side of the map, the blue Zerg playing for True Esport. It is a laser and his opponent the sort of infamous Protoss in the red. It is Naniwa. So, two very good players coming out here. It is a uh, Protoss versus Zerg on the map King Sejong. So we could definitely sort of see some aggression coming out of either player. Sort of see a different style coming out of either player as uh, the Zergs can sort of go with the um, masslings here on this map. We can see Roach Ravager timings. We can see a sort of Aggressive builds, DTs, really anything on a map like this. Then again, as StarCraft, we can sort of see anything like this. But Naniwa going for a wall off on the low ground. Nexus first here, so playing it very greedy here. Hoping to uh, get an edge in that regard. Then moving out with that scouting probe. Wants to make sure that if, there, uh, that if a laser did open up aggressive, that he can react quickly enough. It would be very hard to hold any aggression with the Nexus first, but he wants to be sure anyway. Meanwhile, Laser's Overlord's just moving out. I believe he did see that probe. Maybe, may not. Not necessarily the most important thing, as it's just a standard scouting probe from the looks of it. Meanwhile, Laser already has that spawning pool done, so he did, in fact, go for that uh, pool before hatchery, so he's going to have this sort of aggressive potential, but... It's just like a standard opening. He's getting out link speed. He's continuously mining gas, so he could always go for some banelings. Maybe some overlord drops, which are very common on this map here. It's not the most likely, though. It's not like he's starting to flood links immediately. He's still droning. Just sort of a safer opening on this map, I guess. This probe for Naniwa is running for its life right now. It's going to be very close whether it'll escape in time. Probes just about the speed of Zerglings. Anyway, that's not that's not exactly the most exciting thing right now. But then again, it is just the early game. A laser getting out a queen here. Well, I believe he already has one out. Yes, he does. Second queen. Moving this one down to the uh, natural so he can start injecting. Have a queen at both bases pretty much right away. This probe is actually going to make it home, though. This one zealot's going to be there at the door saying, get in here. Meanwhile, now these two lings for a laser are going to start to work on this pylon. They'll do a significant amount of damage by the end of this, forcing Naniwa to Chrono Boost out the Stalker and actually pull the Zealot out of the wall here to deal with them. One of the lings gets weak, but then pulls off uh, two, <laughs> two Zerglings. While not the most threatening thing in the world, can be certainly annoying, that's for sure. A laser just flying over Naniwa's base with this Overlord, getting a confirmation on the robotics base, so he's going to sort of assume there's no cheese on the way no DTs or no blink all in or anything like that. So a laser's going to be feeling comfortable and he's got a third base on the way. So he's likely just going to keep droning. He is down on workers right now, but uh, he's a Zerg player. That's going to be remedied in a few seconds once some injects go off. Look at that. Seven runs on the way. Meanwhile, Naniwa teching up as his choice. A laser got an overlord with speed, getting continuous scouting confirmation here. So many overlords just flying in and out. Wanting to see exactly what's going on. Now he's seen the Twilight, seen the Robo, so it could possibly be Adept, it could possibly be Blink. Naniwa is a player who's tended to stick with the older styles, even though it is a newer game here. He's, uh, so it wouldn't be surprising to see him go for Blink, but no, this is a tried and true old Protoss style right now. Naniwa going for DTs right now. This is, uh, gonna have some great potential to do damage here. The question. A laser already came in for a scouting. He saw the Twilight Council, but the question is, will he come back in to see if there's a Dark Shrine? One Overlord coming from the north, gonna move in, possibly see this. No, he pulls it back. Another Overlord to the uh, southwest could possibly come in, but that one is very weak here. So, so far, the scout being denied by Naniwa. Warp Prism on the way, so he may very well get some damage done with these DTs. A lair is on the way for a laser here, but... Overseers do take time to morph... A laser does have the speed upgrade, but really not having spore crawlers up will sort of make him vulnerable. But there we are. He is getting up one spore crawler, so at least one of his bases will be safe right now. And I believe a laser might actually just see this dark shrine. Yes, he does. Coming in with another overload to get the scout. Naniwa even photon overcharged to try and deny that. 
but it wasn't enough here. The Dark Shrine was spotted. The Prism is just moving across the map. Now, DTs are going to be warped in, in by Naniwa. Will we? Will they? That's a question. There we are. Naniwa going for four DTs right now. Double arc on drop. Look at that. He's completely decided to skip the, uh, to skip any potential DT harassment. Yeah, DTs can definitely get some damage done even if there is detection, but you know it also gets damage done two Archon drops. So a laser possibly expecting a DT drop, not expecting an Archon drop. Quickly popping drones here are the Archons. Roach is here to clean them up, but uh, some drones are going to go down. The Warp Prism is going to get out. Only shields lost there. One of the Archons is fairly weak, but Naniwa going to continue this harassment right now. Prism does need to stay safe right now. These Archons are going to be saved. Very well done by Naniwa there. We know all laser. He's just continuous, continuing to macro up. He's going to be going for Lurkers by the looks of things. Getting up plus one uh, unit range. So he might just go for Hydras. But generally Zergs go for Lurkers. Look at this. These two Archons even picking off an Overlord with their high damage there. It not managing to get away. We see Roach speed on the way for a laser, so he's going to be sticking with Roaches for defense. Meanwhile, he gets up this Lurker Den. So he is going to be able to get those scary Lurkers, which Protoss does have a hard time dealing with unless they sort of have a very strong army. So for now, Naniwa is just pumping out an Observer. He knows that Lurkers are on the way. He's getting confirmation. These Archons are moving in. Going to start popping drones here and there. That splash damage on the Archons gets another drone or two. That Warp Prism is very weak, though. Needs to stay safe right now. And anyone's actually moving in for an attack right now. This is one decision he can make. I guess he saw that a laser was just teching to those Lurkers. Might not have that much. And actually cancels the fourth base. Very well done by Naniwa. Getting off some more harassment. Just this Warp Prism darting in and out is harassment in itself. Keeping a laser on his toes. Only two Immortals and a handful of Adepts, though. Or this army of Naniwa could definitely be taken out. Look at this, these two Archons though. Getting their, getting work done, keeping a laser on his toes. Hydras are out, so this Prism is going to have to be extra careful right now. Naniwa actually bringing these Archons in to join the main fight. Massive Adept Warp, and he is going to be going for an attack right now. He's got Resonating Glaives. A laser's plus one missile attack is not done yet. But he does have a very scary army. Hydras can push out a lot of damage with a Roach buffer. They can definitely trade with Adepts very well. Naniwa shading in, seeing what he, seeing not what he wants to see, I guess, as he didn't decide to shade there, didn't decide to go for an attack. He's even on army supply with the Zerg player, but Adepts versus an army like this, that it might be better if Naniwa just tries to go for some harassment by shading into all the bases. He loses an arc on there, and that is actually a massive key to his army. Naniwa on three bases, yes, but it's not the best saturation. He needs to get damage done with this attack, and he actually is going to shade on top of this army. The Adept's getting right on top of the Hydra, on top of the Roaches, and they put out good damage with Resonating Glaive. Naniwa morphing in more units. Four Adepts do get warped in before the uh, Prism goes down. The Prism does go down, though, but it seems that a laser might simply die to this attack. A Lurker did burrow, but that was picked off. Naniwa very well done here with this attack, making it work. The Adepts are going to get on top of the army, and Naniwa takes the game. Not the most climactic game there, but Naniwa going for a very solid attack right there. With the, uh, followed up that Archon harassment very well here. It's not often that you see Adepts engage an army like that and simply win. Usually when a Zerg dies to Adepts, it's because they're picked apart. But no, Naniwa just took a head-on engagement very well. Caught a laser off guard. A laser only made, I believe, one lurker that game. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this cast. If you did, feel free to leave a like, give feedback, and otherwise, I shall see you next time.